Praise God. Hallelujah. If you have your Bibles, um, if you have your Bibles, I want you to uh, open them up. <laughs> Praise God. If you don't have your Bibles, you have a, a phone, you can turn to a Bible app and open up your phone. Your, your, uh, to the Bible app here. I'll get this for yourself. Hallelujah. Oh, I love the worship. I want to welcome uh, Raji's mama and grandma's here in the house. We have, oh my goodness, I am so glad. We are blessed that they came all the way to India to see us. Amen. Oh, to see Rajiv and the babies. I'm sorry. Uh, I, uh, I think I'm ex just as excited as, um, as they are, as, as Rajiv and Aswar to have them here. I just, I can't wait. We're going to have uh, Rajiv's grandma, maybe in a couple weeks, going to share with me up here about what's happening in her part of India. And God is doing miraculous things all over the world. Amen. And I'm praying, this is my prayer, that God does some miraculous things here in Madison, Wisconsin. I want to see lives change for His kingdom. I want people to submit their lives to Him and worship Him like we did just now and honor Him, amen, and surrender their lives to Him and say, God, nothing in this world matters but that You matter in my life. You are first. You know what I read? Uh, amen. Uh, God has to be on the throne of our lives. He has to be like first. He has to be like number one. He has to be right there. Like nothing can go between you and God. There's nothing. Not your wife, your children, your finances, your career. Ain't nothing. God has to be first. And then God will change our lives. When we say I surrender all to Him. Amen. We are, uh, wow, that was all good, right? I said God's going to change some lives today. Right? God's going to change your life if you will submit yourself to Him. And you know what? It, it, it takes us as pastors and leaders to encourage you to kind of take the next step, right? I, I don't feel worthy to come in His presence because I know who I really am. But God said, come. Right? He's always pursuing after us. He said, come. And when we come... Oh my goodness, there's so much love, and there's so much grace, and there's so much joy. There's so much that he asks for us that, yeah, I can talk to a stranger on the street, buy a <coughs> breakfast or lunch, and just share Jesus with them. And life comes into the, that person's heart, you know? And I just think, I get excited. You must get that from me, or I get it from him, I don't know. But, you know, we just, I enjoy seeing as God transforms a life of hopelessness into hope. Amen? And I just love that. I mean, I'll give whatever I have to give so somebody can just, like, go and know that Jesus loves them. And then see the transformation in their life. That's what it's all about. So you buy a meal, you spend a few extra bucks, like we talked about last month, you know, generosity, you just give, and you help, and you serve, and God just does His thing, amen? And you go, well, why are you being so nice to me? Because he could just have lunch or bought a lunch and, and not talk about Jesus, talk about the weather, talk about sports, talk about all this other stuff. But no, we talk about Jesus because not just about the giving of the lunch, it's about who gave the lunch. God blessed me, so I want to bless you. Why are you so kind? Well, because God was kind to me and loved me in my weakness. Amen? Amen. So, do you want to help them with this Bible app? Sure. And they can follow along and help my new friends here. That was a shocking experience. The first verse I want to talk to you, I have about 10 to 12 verses today. If you have your bulletins, on the back of your bulletins, there's a place for notes. I am asking you, I am pleading with you, to please take notes today. So if you don't have a bulletin, would you, can you get that to everybody? Thank you, Angel. And there's pens somewhere around here. If not, we'll just... Ask somebody that has a pen. Ask a lady with a big purse. There's probably three or four pens in there. So ask, get a pen. The, what were, are you paying notes in, in notebook or on your iPhone or whatever? But you need to write these down because the verses that I'm going to be sharing today, I want you to go back and read them this afternoon or tomorrow or this week because they're going to help you understand a little bit about how to pray and ask God to have that power in your prayer. Amen? Understand that you have authority in Jesus. Amen? Uh, so the title of the sermon today, I'll just wait a minute. I have an extra one here. Do you want one?
you need one? Chase, you got one? You got a good memory, right? So you got you know, yeah, it's okay. All right. And um, I have X, you need one? You got one? Okay. Now everybody can do it electronically too. Maybe I just send it to you an email or something or text it to you and you can have it too. We're going to go through a lot of verses today. And the reason because we're going to talk about the power of prayer. We need God to bring, it's like when we pray to God, it's like bringing God's solution into our situation. How many know that God has probably answered for our situation better than we have? Yeah. Right? Like he knows, how many know that God is like everywhere and God like knows everything? Yes. Like, and the Bible tells us too that he even knows things before we ask, but we have to ask and I'll share with you about that in a little bit. But we, God like knows, and so my situation, every one of us have different situations. We could just go right now down the, around the room and we could ask, everybody share their, what, what they're struggling with. And we know, I can say, God has an answer for that. God has an answer for that. God can answer that. God can help me with that. God. So my answer when people ask me to have trouble, I say, God. It, it's not simplified. It's just like faith. I have to really believe that God can answer and has the power to answer everything in every situation that we come across or that we're in. Amen? How many believe that? How many have the faith to believe it? Yes, I believe God can do it. I just have to ask. That's the hard part. Because I'm not worthy to ask God for stuff. How many ever feel like that? I'm not, I don't, I, I'm just me. But God loves you. Andy posted uh, on Facebook. Uh, if everybody uh, check into Facebook a little bit and check into Capital City Church when you get a chance, all right? So we can get some more hits on, on Facebook. Uh, but anyway, on Facebook, Andy posted a nice article about something that demonstrated the power of God. There's two stories I want to share. Well, maybe I'll just do one. I'll share the one at the end. But the story that he shared in, on Facebook was a little boy was riding his bike or was walking across the street. I'm not really sure what happened there, but he got hit by a truck uh, on his street where he lives. And he got hit so hard that it actually threw him about 50 feet away from the truck. When he landed on the pavement, he was out. He was gone. There was no life left in him. It happened to be right in front of a pastor's house in this neighborhood. The little boy just lived down the road. When the pastor and his wife and everybody ran out to the street because they heard what happened, all of a sudden, everybody saw this lifeless body laying this little boy on the ground. And they, they ran to it, and as they were going to the body, the pastor's wife said, we need to pray for this little boy. The Holy Spirit just said, pray. And as they gathered around him, they began to pray. The parents came. They were just down the road. Everybody was distraught, but they began to pray. And as they began to pray and speak life into this lifeless body, he came back to life. He went to the hospital. He spent a couple, a week there, came out of the hospital, everything. Is absolutely wrong. God only, only raised him from the dead, but also healed his body. Mm. The power of prayer. Amen. Amen. I was, I'll tell you one more story. The power of prayer. I was in, uh, this was in, um, I think I can't really verify this, but I figured it was a missionary. You probably wasn't lying about it, right? So the missionary in, uh, in Russia. And he would go around to all these little villages in, uh, is it Siberia? Uh, Siberia. Siberia? Siberia. He'd go out to these little towns, little villages, and he'd share Jesus with them. And tell them how Jesus was so powerful, and how Jesus was raised from the dead, and how Jesus did all these miraculous things, how Jesus could forgive their sins. And of course, they didn't believe, but they just listened. And he'd go from town to town, village to village, little village. And all, one time, he was at uh, Cape Hill Village. I met this man, personally, Tina and I. And we were in um, uh, Brownsville and uh, at the revival services in Brownsville, uh, Florida. And it was, uh, who was evangelist? It was. Ed Rosen? Yeah. No. Stephen Hill. He was preaching faith and wonderful things, and thousands of people got saved and were delivered from stuff. It's just an amazing thing. The police would just take people, they, they arrested, and they'd run to the church because they knew that. They would get something more than they could get in jail, so they would 
get saved and get the life of Jesus and go to school and ministry. It's amazing <laughs> stories they have there. But anyway, we were there. We met this missionary, and he was sharing this story with us. And one of the villages he went to, there one, one of the men, one of the elders of, the, of this village, had passed away. And they remember what this evangelist said. So they wrapped his body up, and they kept him for almost a year till he came back around to that same village again. And they told him when they got there, if you, if you could raise him from the dead, we'll believe in this Jesus that you've been preaching about. Do you know what God did? <laughs> this guy was dead for like a year. In the church building, they brought him, brought him in. All the whole village was there. They brought him up to the, up the front, and um, he prayed for him. And all he said was this, in the name of Jesus, in the name of, and the, those guys who had so much, I don't know, maybe it was anticipation, I don't know what it was, but God brought life to that man's body, and he got up and walked, and he had a big celebration service. Everyone in that village got saved. Amazing. God is still doing stuff like that today, amen? There's power in prayer. There's power in the name of Jesus. Let's, Amen. I'm going to go through some scriptures with you. I hope, I don't know, man. You know what my hope is for you today? Is that you understand there's, that you have the same power because of Jesus in you. Amen? That God wants you to pray in his name. Jesus wants you to pray in his name. There's so much on prayer that I can't even tell you all of it today. We're going to take the next four weeks to share with you about that. But there, we, we want to bring God, we want to bring God's solution to our situation. So I have about 10 to 12 verses I want to go through and just share with you. The first one is in Psalms 107, 28 through 30. And uh, let me just read this, but I want you to go to Matthew 7, 7. Can you go to Matthew 7, 7? I'm going to read Psalms. Just write down Psalms 107. 107, 28 through 30, says this. Then they cried to the Lord in their troubles, and he delivered them from their distress. He made the storms be still and the waves of the sea hush. Then they were glad and that the waters were quiet, and they brought to them, uh, he brought them out of their distress. God, and we call on God and cry out to him, and no matter what troubles we're going through life, he will bring you out of it. Amen. So let's find out how that happens, though. And, and first, uh, first, if you're taking notes, number one would be ask. We have to ask God. We need to act, be able to humble ourselves enough to ask God for help. Amen? So first, uh, at, uh, Matthew, let me get there with you, 7, 7. Let me just start with 7 uh, through 12. We'll go through that same, those, that, all that section right there in your Bible. It says this. Ask Matthew 7. Did you get there yet? 7. Matthew 7, 7 through 12. Everybody got that? Got that? Okay. It's important that you see this in the Word of God. Matthew 7. This is at my title, Ask, Seek, and Knock. But let me, let me just read it for you. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, the, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the doors will be opened. Which is which of you, if you if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then know you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give you the give you good gifts to those who ask him? So in everything, do to others what you would have them do to you, for this sums up the law and the prophets. This is, this is a whole sermon right in itself, but I want, to, I want to share more of this. So it says, ask, seek him. So what does this word ask? This word, if you look at this word ask, it's just like the verse word in Psalm. It's like, I'm a shouting out to God. I'm asking him for what I need. I'm, I'm, I'm seeking him out and saying, God, I need your help. That's what it's saying here. God, I, when you need God's help, when you, when you need help in your situation, you can't figure it out, you're, you're, you're distressed, you're confused, you're hopeless, you ask God. And then it says, if you're being evil, meaning us people before we receive Jesus, know how to give good gifts to our children, how much more will your Father in heaven give those to them that ask? 
What are you asking for today? God, I want the power that was demonstrated when those people prayed over that little boy and raised him up. Or when Jesus prayed over Lazarus to call out his name and he rose from the dead. Or maybe just sharing a meal with somebody and see him come to know Jesus and their life change. Ask him. And then it says, this sums up the, look what it says, it says verse 12. So when everything due to others, what you have, how many of you know do that? Do to others as you'd like them to do to you, right? You thought your mama made that up. That was actually in the Bible, right? Yeah, it's in the Bible. Do to others. What would you want people to do to you? Treat you nice, right? Love you? Accept you for who you are? Right? I, I don't know about you, but I... I'd like to just be loved, right? Like, I just want people to love me or like me, right? Isn't that like a big thing? We always want to be, we have like one or two friends, but we don't really are accepted by a lot of people. To have the power of prayer in our lives, we need to first ask God. I was thinking today, this morning, man, the reason I don't ask God is because I just like, there's stuff, we won't get into it too much, we'll get it to you. But like there's stuff in me that's probably not acceptable to God, so I don't want to go to God. Say, Amen, Pastor. Amen. Uh, maybe there's stuff in me, or I don't feel good enough because of what I've done, or my past, or who I am. But God wants to pour into you. He wants to pour into you. Matthew twenty one twenty two says this, and whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive. And it says by faith. So if I'm asking, what am I asking for? When I pray to God, I want Him to, I, I, I'm, today we're just probably going to talk about ourselves a lot, you know, we're just going to say, I'm just a needy person, and I need God, I want to know God hears me, right? I, sometimes I don't know God hears me, I, I just, I'm needy, and so these verses are hopefully will say, listen, but you know, when you pray, it's really more than just for us. Right? When we really pray, we're praying for like other people and, and people in our community. But sometimes we've got to get started, right? In prayer, this prayer life. So let's just talk about us a little bit today. Just, just look at a, ourselves, how we can change so we can be powerful. Because what happens, as soon as you start praying, your heart changes like for God. So your heart becomes like God's heart. And His desires become your desires. And the things that He wants becomes what you want them. It takes time. But it usually happens in, when we're in the Word, but when we're in prayer time. Like, all of a sudden you start asking for these. God, I like uh, this, and I like that, and I like a better job, and a pay raise, and I need more money for this, or whatever. You start praying for yourself, right? How many has done that? Come on, we've all done that, right? We need, we need God to help us. And then, all of a sudden, in prayer time, we all of a sudden, something changes in our heart. We start praying for, like, other people, because we hear our needs, like, in our mission community. We get to know our people in our mission community, so we want to pray for them. Pray for people. I think everybody that needs a job has got a job that needs one. I mean, just, you know, we just pray for things. People that are sick, we're healed. We have just miraculous things that happen when we pray together in our groups. God, that's, that's the power of God. Amen? That's true. And, Amen. and so Amen. we become unselfish in our prayer time. So whatever you ask in faith. So what are we asking for? I think our hearts change in that. Amen? And Matthew, uh, Mark eleven twenty four says this. Um, don't turn there. But I'm just going to go real quick. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. Amen. Come on. It's the Word of God. That's right. So what are we asking for? I remember I used to, when I first became a Christian, when I was a new believer, and I heard this, oh, well, I need a new car. Yeah. <laughs> right? I need, I need, we, had a, we had a pretty bad car. We needed a new car. I prayed, and guess what happened? We got a new car. Yeah. I think that's cool. I think God helps you with stuff like that when you, you start off, you know? But then all of a sudden, if something changes... And because it's not about my need, all of a sudden I'm praying for other people to have a call. Or have healing. Or I, when I go to the hospital and I lay hands on a sick person and God heals them. I'm like, wow, this prayer stuff works. I begin to change from what I want and what my needs are to what God wants. His compassion and love begins to flow through me. Look at John. Let's turn to John chapter 14. I'll tell you where to turn, but just write the other verses down so you can look them up later. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John 14. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and 
and verses uh, 12 through 14. And again, I'm, I'm, you have to, this Jesus talking to his disciples, and then he comes to the end of this, this, this uh, what he's telling them about. He says, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. Jesus says it so many times. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I, have, I am doing. What did Jesus do? Now let me read it again. I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I am doing. He will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. He was telling the disciples about it. He's going to go to the cross and he was going to die. But he was on earth at this time. So he's going to leave earth. He's going to go with his Father. And he says in verse 13, And I will do whatever you ask in my name so that the Son may be glory in, may the Son may be glory in the Father. You may ask me for anything in my name and I will do it. What is it saying there? It's saying, whatever you ask in my name, I will do it for you. Church, church, listen to me. This is really powerful. This is exciting. This is amazing. Can we get this in our spirit? It says here that because Jesus was leaving, and there's a whole lot more teaching to tell you more about it, but I'm just saying, because he left, he sent the spirit. And he'll help you pray. But anyway, he says, ask anything. And who's going to be glorified when he answers your prayer? God. Jesus will be glorified. The Son will be glorified. The God will be glorified. Exactly. So you, like, I used to tell people, when I pray for people, I said, well, I don't take, um, like, I don't take any of the glory for the good things that happen. I don't take any of the, you know, uh, what, how do I say that? Um, I don't take any of the blame for stuff when it doesn't happen. Amen? I don't, I'm not, I don't say, oh, it didn't happen, so, oh, God must have been sleeping that day. No, God's always awake. We're just, Lord, he's always awake. Right in the answer, he's always pursuing you to him. He's coming out and, and touching your life. You just listen to him. He loves you so much. But he's saying, listen, you have to believe. That's what faith is. I have to believe that God will do what I said. Yeah. So when I grab hands with somebody and I say, God, will you touch their lives or this, uh, touch their marriage, touch their finances or, or whatever, I believe God's going to do it. I love this part right here because God, it's like Jesus challenged the disciples and he's challenging us today too. You're going to do greater works than Jesus. Explain that one to me. Huh? I, I mean, I studied this. This is my, one of my favorite sections of the Bible right here in John 14. You're going to do more than I could ever do. Well, because Jesus was only on earth for a few years, I guess, and his ministry for three years, so I've been in ministry ten years, I've been accomplished more than Jesus. I don't know if that works that way. I don't really, I don't know. But I can touch more lives. I can lead them to Him. I can pray for people. Oh, I don't know. Maybe we've already done that. Maybe we're done By sharing Jesus' love with the world around us and see lives transformed for His glory, oh my goodness. Greater work. So will that mean you raise somebody from the dead? I don't know. If God says go lay hands on that sick per or that dead person and he'll raise them up, I just have to be obedient to that. Amen? Amen. Or just pray for your situation. <coughs> God, you can do it. And I'll share with you a little bit how to just let go of that. See, the hard part is that let go of our, our problems and let God take care of it. Amen? Ask. We have to ask. And Jesus said he would do those. And then we have to ask. We have to pray in faith. Matthew, uh, Mark 9.29. And he said to them, this kind cannot come out, be driven out, but by prayer. This was a demonic person uh, that, was, that the disciples had trouble with that, delivering them. And all of a sudden, Jesus said, these things come out by prayer and fasting. We need to pray so we can just, I can't, what Jesus was saying, and I think he was telling us today, we can't do anything on our own power. How many know that demons are real? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah. How many know that you like, need to cast them out of their house or stuff like that? You know, like just say, take authority if you have problems in your own home. You ever do that? No? One person? Two, three, four people? Yeah. I mean, when you're having trouble in your house, you know, you and your wife aren't fighting, the finances aren't working out, there's just like no peace there. You know, you know what I'm talking about, right? I'm just talking, being real with you. I've been through this myself. Go through a house and I just anoint every room with oil in the name of Jesus and command all the evil spirits to leave. I don't know if they're not just like I need to take authority over them. Because I have authority over them. Yes, so sir. do you. Amen. Every time we bought a house or went to a new apartment where we lived, we always just pray over it. We didn't know what happened in that place before we got there, so we just kind of cleaned it out. Amen. 
Get this out of here in Jesus' name. Amen? If you need help with that, just call Andy. He'll come over and pray for you. Was, yeah, we believe in this stuff. God wants you to have joy and peace in your home. And when the enemy comes around, and we just got to know we have authority over that. Amen? And she said, well, we can't just do it. Like, you just can't get up in the morning and go, oh, I think I have to pray, spend some time with God, you know, and get to God's presence and God's and just You have that authority, amen? How many believe you have that authority? Okay, us five or six people will come over to your house. The office will show up. Amen? Have a, a casting out, joy filling up the house party. Huh? A Holy Ghost party. Yeah. Instead of having a pizza party on Friday, we'll have a prayer party. Come on, change, we got to change the atmosphere of the church. We are, I think the lack of power in the church is because we don't pray. Amen? Anyway, all right. Uh, Acts 9.40. But Peter um, put them all outside. This is when Tabitha, this is when little girl Tabitha was, was sick and had died. Can we know the story? Look, well, I don't, let's not go there. But anyway, read the story when you get home. 940. So Peter goes in his home. Little girl Tabitha was laying in bed. She was dead. Every, all the mourners were there. They were crying. Oh, Tabitha's dead. You're just like you would if you lost a child. Think about how you would mourn. Huh? And, uh, and you would just you'd be heartbroken. And so these mourners were there. And so Peter's like, okay, uh, why don't you guys kind of, I appreciate all that, that's good, but would you just kind of like go outside for a moment? Right? He goes and kneels down next to her bed. Amazing, right? And he prays over her. And when God brought life back to her body, she sat up and he took out to everybody. And he took out her. It's amazing, right? God's still doing that stuff today. This was after his resurrection. This, like, this was after he rose from the dead. This wasn't when Jesus was walking on earth. This was afterwards. This was Peter, one of the disciples, did this. Amen? And he prayed for Tabitha. Tabitha. And Tabitha opened her eyes. She sat up. Man. Powerful, powerful, right? Okay, I want, I want you to um, turn with me to James. This is faith. Peter had faith to believe that that could happen. A lot, of, a lot of scriptures I told you this morning because this is the word of God. It's not Pastor Bob, okay? That's what I want you to get. We, we can and will be uh, people of prayer. And God will change our lives if we become people of prayer. When I came here almost 11 years ago, God said this. This house will be a house of prayer for all nations. And that mean, word nation means all people groups. So we're going to pray for everybody. Pray for one another. So who do I pray for? I'm going to get into that a little bit. How do we start this whole thing? I'll start a little bit. James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. Okay, 13, 13, 14, and 15, 16, 17. <laughs> just read the whole thing. <laughs> it says, is any one of you in trouble? How many are in trouble? Raise your hand. All right, being honest is good. He should pray. Let me say it again. Is anybody here in trouble? Some of us could be in trouble. All right? Yeah. Just saying. He should pray. Is anyone happy? Any happy people? Yeah. we got some happy people, all right? Let, he should sing songs. All right? He should sing songs. Okay, let's hear you sing. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. This is what it says, right? Let them him sing songs of praise. Hallelujah, Lord, you blessed me, you gave me, provided for me. Hallelujah, I'm going to have twins, not me, but Ashley is. <laughs> praise God, hallelujah, he is so wonderful. Right? we we got to forget that where our, our joy comes from. It comes from the Lord, amen? Read, read Psalms, amen? Let him sing praises. Is any one of you sick? How many sick people we got here? Anybody sick? One, two, sick people, two sick people. What is it? You should call for the elders of the church to pray over him or her and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. Oh, so if you're sick, you should be calling for the elders of the church. You call Richard, you call Bob, you call Andy, right? You call us and we'll pray for you. That's what it says. I mean, that's what the word says. Well, I don't want to bother the pastor. He's so busy. 
No, I'm just hanging out waiting for your phone call to pray for you. That's what I do. I, you know, we have cell phones now, so you can call me anytime. You can even text me. I can, I'll text a prayer to you. I've done that many times. Tina too, right? Anybody ask for prayer, we pray right away. Why? Because I believe in the power of prayer. And the Bible says when I pray, I can pray in the name of Jesus. We read that earlier. We have the power. We have authority, right? So I'm praying for my loved one, but I need help because I don't see anything happen, right? I, I have faith, but nothing's happening. Man, I'm going to call for some people to help me pray. That takes a position of humility. That takes a position I need help, right? Because we can't do it on our own. That's why Jesus came to die for us. If we could do it on our own, he wouldn't have to come and die for us. Right? So we needed Jesus. I told myself this morning before I came out here, I was not going to be sarcastic. I'm trying not to be. <laughs> I, I'm just who I am, I guess, you know? I said, this is power in the name of Jesus. This is real, right? So we pray, and it says, and then it says, what does it say next? It says, verse 15, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. So when we pray, who's going to raise him up? Lord. The Lord, yeah. And I, re I remember when revelation came to my heart about this. I thought I had to pray for everybody. I had to do all these things. No, it's the Lord that does it. It's just we have to activate our faith. It's the Lord that raises them up. It's the Lord that delivers them. The Lord that brings salvation. It's the Lord that heals them. Oh, praise the Lord. So I don't get, you get all the glory, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You did it again, Jesus. It's amazing. Come on, smile. Put a smile on your face. You know it's good, right? It's Jesus that does it. We just have to humble ourselves and say, Jesus, sometimes. <coughs> I will tell you another story. I like when the Holy Spirit gives me a, like, don't you remember when this happened to you? I was in, uh, I was in the Marine Corps with advanced school. It was the early 80s, a long, long time ago. I was a new believer, only a few years, and I got sick. Marissa, I was in my bed. I was sweating. I couldn't get out of bed. I was so sick, I couldn't even move. Uh, I had, and I'd be preaching to everybody. Every morning I'd get up and I'd write scripture verses on the chalkboard. It, chalkboard, you know, all the way, right? And on the chalkboard, I'd write, I, that's the that's right? I put on top, every morning I'd ask God, give me a verse for these guys. I was in a group of about 15 to 20 Marines, and we were going through this band school. So I'd say, Lord, what can I do to these guys? What can I do? Well, how can I lead them to you? So the Lord said, do this. So every morning I'd, get, I'd read my devotion, and the Lord would give me a scripture verse, and I'd go and I'd write it on the chalkboard. And they look forward to it. If I forget a day, they would remind me, hey, you forgot the scripture verse. God was doing stuff in the heart because the word of God is powerful, amen? Mm -hmm. But I, was, I got sick one weekend. It was like the third or fourth weekend in. And, um, I mean, the guy I was, the, my bunk guy, the guy that was in the bunk above me was a total atheist. He mocked me when I was doing my devotionals and stuff, right? He saw me sweating and, oh, where, where's God now? He would just make fun of me. And he'd go, you want something to eat? Ah, uh, your God will provide for you. And he'd walk off and go to get something to eat and wouldn't bring me nothing back. <laughs> yeah, he was like that. I loved him, though. I knew God had his heart. That's why he was so mean to me. It wasn't me. It was God getting his heart, you know? And the more he's mean, I knew God was doing more in his heart. The more, I, I, and then, then as that weekend, when Saturday night went on, I, I couldn't even talk. Couldn't even speak my my throat. I had uh, I know I had strep throat. It was it was it was just it got me. And I had my Bible. I was laying in bed. Oh Lord Jesus! I couldn't even I couldn't even barely speak the name. And Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, two three o'clock in the morning. Jesus totally delivered me. 100%. Everything was gone. And when I got up in the morning on Monday, because he was drunk, I wasn't. I woke him up. I said, my God's alive. He goes, man, you were so... I said, God, Jesus is real. And I wish I could tell you to this day that he's a Christian. I don't know. Because I've never seen him again. Never seen him again. So I don't know, but I just believe that he's a believer today because of that incident. I said the name of Jesus, and God healed me. And now today, when I get sick in my throat, all I have to do is say the name of Jesus, and instantly it's gone. I never have to deal with that battle again. I don't know why, I just thank God. There's power 
in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's right. All we have to do is believe. All we have to do is have faith. Lord, sometimes we have to pray this prayer. I pray this often, so you can pray it too. Just tell you, Lord, help my unbelief. I believe the word. I just sometimes don't believe it here. Help me to believe this. Because there's power in his name. Amen. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then, I don't want to miss this. Okay, so let's go to the next spot. Okay, can we go down and stay right there, James? Because I just was going to go past this and I, I, I shouldn't. Look at verse 15. It says, And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. Now look what the next part of that says. If, every circle if in your Bible there. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer offered the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and, what does the next word say in your Bible? Effective. Mine says effective. effective. So, not saying that all sickness is, ca is caused by sin, but we can get some reference to that. We won't get into that today. That sometimes you are sick because of sin. Not every time, but sometimes you are. And if you sin, you will know it right away. Because God touched your life. And God will say He will forgive you of your sin. Because your prayers, saints, all of you believers, how many believe this? Your prayers are powerful and effective Amen. for His kingdom. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Well, God, we want to win our city for Jesus. And half of our church is empty. What if we all prayed for people? And they'll say, and God will heal them. And when he heals them, they're going to say, what happened? How did you know that was going on in my heart or my life? And they'll come to Jesus because you're not going to take the glory for it. They're going to go, look what I did. They're going to say, Jesus did it. Amen. And they're going to be, they'll come and give their lives to the Lord. Sure. And all their sins will be forgiven. Amen? Because who can forgive sin? <coughs> only Jesus. Oh, Salvation is found in only one. Only Jesus. But, like, Jesus is not here right now, so we, like, have to do something. We have to like, tell people about this Jesus that radically changed our lives. And maybe buy them a lunch or, or do whatever. Would you do, I have two more verses I want to go over with you. The one's in the book of Ephesians and one's in Philippians. We should do all this with thanksgiving all the time. Never take credit for anything but with thanksgiving to God. Thank Him for being using you. So let's turn to the book of Ephesians. Galatians, Ephesians, right? So, you know what? It's Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, right? And Colossians, right? So how do you remember that section of us? This is what some guy told me. He says, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Gentiles, eat... So, I mean, God's power oh, God's electric power company sounds better. Yeah. That's what I was taught when I was just a new Christian. I'm sorry, I'm just trying to share that with you. It might help, help you. Or maybe I should say pork. That would sound better, right? Yeah. Pork? <laughs> yeah. So, anyway. Galatia, I mean Ephesians, I'm sorry. Ephesians, where was I? God's electric power company. Yeah. Thank you. So, I want to teach again a little bit more. I want you guys to get this in your heart, in your spirit, in your, in your life. Look, look at verse 18. It says, oh, I'm sorry, 6. Ephesians 6, 18. I should 
should have a whiteboard up here. Probably help me. Oh, there you go. Thank you, brother. <laughs> Good man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So we need to smile. All right. Man, I love this stuff. Galatians, or Ephesians, I'm sorry. 18, uh, sorry. We need to get on the piano, girl. Let's, let's get, I'm going to get excited here. I can't wait to the end. See, I already know what's going to happen at the end. And so I'm just getting, I'm, I'm ahead of you. I'm just got to slow down a little bit. God's going to do some things in our lives today. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Let me read that again. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests with this in mind. Be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. So who should I pray for? I pray for everybody. Pray for me, please. Pray for Tina, pray for Andy and Rachel and Brad and Crystal and, and Rajiv and, and um, Dion. And, you know, just pray for everybody, our leadership, and pray for everybody. Just pray, right? For all the saints, for everything, right? On all occasions. Pray also for me, Paul said. He said, pray for me. And, you know, look, he says this. I want to just back this up just for a minute. And the... Chapter 6 of Ephesians is so powerful. One of the things it does is it teaches about the armor of God. How many see that in verse 10? It says, the armor of God. So keep this in mind. Did we just read that? Keep this in mind. What are you keeping in mind? Something I had to read this. What are we keeping in mind? What is a, when I read the scriptures, I'm like, what is, it says, pray in the spirit on all occasions, all things. So keep this in mind. So what are we keeping in our mind? Let's go back a little bit and see and that's why I want you to take these verses home with you and read the whole section, the whole chapter with these verses. So you know that I'm not teaching you, like pulling something out of context and just teaching you a little bit. I'm just teaching you a little portion of it today. But know that I'm teaching you within what the, what the, the writer was saying, what the Holy Spirit was trying to tell us today. I don't want to just impress you. I want you to understand this is really important that we keep this in mind. What do we got to keep in mind? Look at verse 10. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Is it put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's scheme? There's a whole sermon in itself. I'm just going to go through this quickly. All right? The devil's scheme. The devil's after you, right? The devil's after you to kill you and destroy you and crush your life. That's his job. That's his only purpose. You have power over the enemy. Amen? You have power over Satan, his demons, all the demonic things, all the open doors that you have allowed yourself to walk into and they were wrong. God's going to close those doors for you and allow you to be a new person in him. You have that authority. We find that in prayer. We find this scripture coming alive in prayer too. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. God does not want you to be weak. God doesn't want, to, want you to be without power. You understand? He wants you to have power to do the things that he called you to do. That power, that word power is also authority. You have authority when you use his name. We have this. You and me. We can go to that dead person and say, that little boy, get up in Jesus' name. And those, those people crying out, Jesus, 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 over that boy. And that life came to that boy. Because there's power in his name. You have that power. <clears throat> Verse 11. Put on the full armor of God. There's an armor. Paul was in prison. He was looking at a Roman soldier when he described this. And he looked at it and he put a spiritual emphasis on this. He goes, look at it. He says, um, put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. So when you're arguing with the world and with people, that's not who you're really arguing with. When you're arguing with your wife or your kids, you're not really, it's, it's the enemy. The enemy comes to steal your joy. God brings joy. One of the fruits of the Spirit is joy. Amen? Hallelujah. But against the, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against spiritual forces of evil in heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that when the days of evil come, which I think we're on right now, you may be able to stand your ground, and against uh, after, I'm sorry, and after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, and your whole world is falling around about you, and you feel defeated, you take a stand. No, I'm going to believe in Jesus. I'm planting my feet on the rock, Jesus Christ, and I will not be moved. I'm going to seek him out. I'm going to ask, and I'm going to knock. God, take care of the situation. I'm going to cry out to him. I'm going to shout to him. I'm going to pray to him. I'm going to be quiet in my quiet place so I can hear his voice. I'm going to seek him. I'm not going to let the enemy win. No matter how things look and how bad, how low my checking account got, and how, if I just got lost my job, or whatever situation, got horrible health news, or whatever it is, I'm believing Jesus because in him there's life. I have faith to believe that he can give me victory over every situation, every addiction, everything. I don't, you can't name a thing that God can't conquer on your behalf. Amen. He can do it. And this is what he says. Stand firm then with your belt uh, of truth uh, buckled around your waist with your breast, breastplate of righteousness in place and stand with your feet fitted with, with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. The gospel of peace. Come on, you have the gospel in your heart. What is the gospel? The gospel is simply that Jesus, God loved us. And he sent Jesus to pay a penalty for our sin. That's the gospel. And then to prove that, God raised him from the dead on the third day. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. And Jesus right now is praying also for you and me. I love that. You guys have been here for a while. You know that's my favorite. I love it. Jesus is praying for you and me right now. He's not just sitting up there with his heart, you know, jumping from cloud to cloud, you know? Or maybe riding horses or something because he's coming back on a white horse. He couldn't be doing that. But it says he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, interceding. That means he's travailing for you and me to get to know this and to know the truth. And have the power that he had so we can do great works than he did while he was on earth. I want that. <laughs> I just want what I just said. I want to be that way. Amen? I want to walk with God. And look at it. It says in verse 3, And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith. Roman soldiers always had big shields. I believe that, that which, uh, with which you can extinguish the, all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And this is, look at verse 17. This is so important. Everybody, everybody in this room. I don't care if you've been walking with the Lord for one day or for 20, 30 years. This is, this is kind of the key. Take on this helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions. And with this kind of prayer and request, keep this in mind. Let me go back. Verse 17. This is so important. Take on the helmet of salvation. Wasn't it you, Andy, that shared a vision with me when you were about 10 years old? Wasn't that? Every time I read this, I remember that story. So, Andy, I'm, I'm going to tell the story. I'm sorry. I owe you money. Then. So, when Andy was a little, I don't know, 8, 9 years old, maybe he was 10, he had a dream. And this is the dream he had, or at least of what I remember of it. He could fill it in later. But he's telling me how there were, he was in a church building, and there was people pastors on the stage and, and there were people out in the audience and some of the people had different levels of armor on but most of the people all they had was their, their helmet of salvation right they had no armor on was that right they were just they were, they were powerless because they just I'm a believer this is the thing I think of what it meant is that I believe in God I, but I don't I'm not doing anything we're powerless that's why I see the church today still we, oh yeah, I'm a Christian, but there, there's no evidence of it. Can I say it that way? Mm -hmm. Like, I believe. Okay, go out and slay the dragon. <laughs> no, 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 can't do that. Pastor, you're, you're a pastor, you should do that. <laughs> go lay hands on the sick, because they're, you know, go send a pastor. No, 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 no. I don't read this that way. 
See, the vision that he had, it says that there's people in the church, all these people, are, they're dressed in white. They had white robes on, right? They had white robes on, they had a helmet, but they had no nothing else. They were, they were like, like, they don't have... I mean, how can you be a Christian and not have the power of God in you? That's what I'm thinking. Can I be really honest with you? See, we don't really have... In the church, we don't understand this to help salvation. Let me explain it to you today as we close. Let me explain why maybe we don't have a desire to pray and seek after God and thank Him for the things we have. We don't have an attitude of gratitude in our everyday life because we don't understand this. We gotta understand salvation. See, <coughs> we have to understand without God's forgiveness and His blood cleansing us from our sins, our destination is, is eternity in hell. God never intended that for us. Let me say it again. If we don't serve Jesus, if we don't have Him in our heart, if we don't follow Him every day of our lives, our let me say it again. Every day of our life, our destination is eternal death, which God never intended for us. He intended for us to have eternal life. And He also intended us to walk in power so we can spread His gospel of love to the whole world. That's our responsibility. Everything else in the world is nothing. As Paul said, it is dumb. Do you need interpretation of dumb? <laughs> Everything in the world is done. All my fancy clothes, all my stuff I have, is nothing that I can just see one more person give their life to Jesus. Not only give their life to Jesus and follow Him, but see them come to be powerful Christians for His kingdom. Not stop halfway, like, oh, I've got the helmet of salvation on. woo -hoo! No, folks, it's more than that. We're in a battle for your life. We're in a battle for the lives of our neighbors and friends and our loved ones. We're in a battle for eternity. That's what we're, we are warriors for his kingdom. We need his power to help us do that. And if we don't accept it, then we don't get it. If we don't humble ourselves and put on the helmet of salvation, if we don't take up the shield of faith, we don't put on the gospel in our most inner beings, if we don't do that, then we're, we're, we're weak Christians and we're effective. Is that the other word? Yeah. We have, we have no, a lot of us just worry about like, wow, I made a church on Sunday. Woohoo! And I'm glad you're here. I am. I'm glad we're here. Don't get me wrong. But I want you to be like a warrior Monday through Friday through Saturday, right? I want you to, to be a, a light to the world and let them know how much God loves them. Well, Pastor, I have so much stuff. Yeah, I know. God knows too, so let's go through it. Let me walk through it with you. Let me help you get the baggage off so we can hear the voice of God. Let me walk through sin in your life and just like, let's rip it out and let God take care of it, amen? Let us help you with that. That's what missional community is about. That's what this church is about now. It's, it's been a hard change for me over the last year and a half to, to understand this. But like, we really got to do life together. It's like the early church. What, let's go there. Let's go to Acts. Let me, let's go to Acts, chapter 2. I didn't want to beat you guys up this morning at all. I just wanted to encourage you to pray. Right, anybody encourage you? You will be. Because we're going to keep praying for you. Acts 2, 42. So, the early church started off this way. This is what this, this verse is about. And then the church kind of evolved into this religious activity thing that we see today. Okay? That's not... Healthy because what it does is says we have to come to an institution to get taught something so we can go out and be like Jesus. When actually we all should be seeking Jesus every day and come on Sunday morning, be encouraged to continue to fight the good fight of faith. Can I say it again? See, so, so the early church prayed together. They came together, had meals together, they fellowshiped together, they encouraged one another because 
At any moment, they could have been arrested by the Roman soldiers and crucified like Jesus was. That didn't stop when Jesus was crucified. That was still going on, like it's going on in the Middle East now. You need to be saved. You need to know Jesus. Let me read this, and then I'm going to finish up with, Tina, would you come to the piano, please, and just play uh, whatever? And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship of the, uh, verse 42. Is everybody there? Yes? Yes? Yes. Okay. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, uh, to the, to fellowship and to breaking of bread and to prayer. They devoted themselves. They came together. They spent time together. They knew each other. Amen? They were taught of God. They taught about the things of God. At that time, they didn't have the New Testament written yet, so they went through the Scriptures, which was the Old Testament, and seen how Jesus fulfilled all the things and all the prophecy. That it was prophesied that He would come. It was prophesied that He was going to die. It was prophesied that He was going to be raised from the dead. That was all. And they studied together. And learn and share what all was in need. And God did thousands and thousands and thousands of people came to know Jesus. We, and we quit forward this all the way up to 2016. And we have a church that won't even share with their neighbor or give a little bit of the resources to help somebody. It's a sad thing. It's a sad thing. God has blessed us in America. have to start with salvation. Am I am I really saved? Am I really a follower of Jesus? Am I as John 3 says, am I born again? Did I give my life to Jesus? Or is there so much secret sin in my life? There's so many things that I just like, hey, I just want to show up. Spirit, just examine your life right now. Oh, we need the power of prayer. We need God's power in our prayer so we can see the miraculous happen for your kingdom, Father. Father, there's so many things in my life that I just I feel so inadequate, so unloved. I feel lost, Lord. If you're here today and you just said, Lord, Jesus, I need to change my life. I need you to be my Lord. I need to follow you. And I've messed up so much up to this point. I just need you, Father God. If that's you today, would you just raise your hands? and say, I need Jesus. Anyone else? There's two people raise their hands. Anyone else? I'm so far from you, God. I need you. Thank you for those hands. Hallelujah. Father, thank you so much. And maybe you're here today and you, you put on the hell of salvation. You said yes to Jesus. You couldn't even remember the day and the moment it happened. You said, yes, I want to follow him. I want to follow him all the days of my life. I, I know Jesus is the way to salvation. But ever since that day, you had this joy maybe in the beginning, but it kind of just faded away. And now you just struggle at every turn. You struggle with everything, with your relationship with Him, understanding who your identity with Him. Life situations just are so burdensome. And you want to, to, to restore that joy and that pursuit and that hunger of God. If that's you in your life, just raise your hand right now and put it back down. Yes, anyone else? Thank you. Let's be honest before God. This is me, you, and God right now. I'm not perfect, but I'm sure, I'm sure I want to do what God wants me to do. Hallelujah. 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 Father, you see every hand that was raised, Lord. 
would you do this? Uh, everybody that raised their hand, would you just come up here? Andy, would you come up here? I would like, I would just want to pray for you. I don't want to embarrass you, I just want to pray for you. Hallelujah.